really, really late, but I'm wide awake. I couldn't sleep, um, and I was up, and so I started studying. I was doing a study on um, lust and all of that. So I thought, well, I want to record my thoughts, so might as well do it on a Periscope so that they can bless you guys as well, and I can keep record of my thoughts. So I'm going to do a quick kind of conversation on the topic of lust and um just my thoughts on it, some biblical thoughts on it. You know, it's something that a lot of us struggle with. Um, men and women alike struggle with lust. And it's a very, 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 very common uh, thing that all of us struggle with. And nobody kind of really wants to touch the topic too much uh, for whatever reason. But it's something that needs to be talked about, needs to be discussed in a very honest way because so many people deal with it. And, uh, you know, with that, with so many people dealing with lust and perversion, a lot of people can get misconceptions as to how to deal with it, how to handle it. And so I want to talk about that, you know, so we can clear the air. So just to, to start out, lust is defined as a very strong sexual desire or a strong craving or desire often uh, of a sexual nature. Um, there's a man by the name of Oh God, John Piper, John Piper, amazing man of God. I encourage you guys, if you don't know who he is, to look him up. He has a uh, wonderful, wonderful a uh, article and sermon on the top on this topic of lust. I think it's called "Dealing with um, the Unbelief of Lust," and he said a sexual desire. Uh, he said his uh, definition of lust is a sexual desire that dishonors its object and disregards God. I thought that was a beautiful definition of what lust is. It's something that dishonors its object and disregards God. Lust is, I've heard it said this way, lust uh, takes, love gives. So lust is that thing that's always, it's 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 when you're like constantly desire, desiring something that you don't have or you can't have and you're, you know, you dishonor it because you're only, uh, purpose in wanting it is so that you can use it for your own pleasures or for your own gain. And so it, it thoroughly dishonors the object of the lust and it disregards God. And so uh, as a born again believer, there's uh, some really, really, you know, amazing principles that we can use in scripture to how do we approach the concept of lust? How do we deal with it? How do we overcome it? Because the reality is that this is the fight that is common for all believers. This, the temptation, the struggle of life, the desires of this flesh, not only sexual, but that's kind of what we're going to be talking about tonight. So let's look at, uh, I want to look in the scripture. I'm going to look at first Thessalonians four, first Thessalonians four. We're going to start there. First Thessalonians chapter number four and verse three. First Thessalonians chapter number four and verse three. It says this, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. I'm going to read that scripture again. Every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. That's very, very important. Not in the lust of concupiscence. And another another uh, translation might say the passions of your lust. Uh, not in the passions of your lust, even as the Gentiles, which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother concerning this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God has not called us unto uncleanness. Hallelujah. Uh, for God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God who has also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Now I want to talk about this scripture. I'm going to plug my phone up real quick because it's trying to die. You want me hold on one second, y'all? Okay, perfect. So this is crazy. This is what the scripture says. It says, not in the lust, not in your lust, even as the Gentiles, which know not God. Another translation says, as the heathen. Who don't know God. You know, our more modern translations of the scripture uh, word things 
so politely and so nicely because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We don't want nobody to be offended. But the old writings or the, the, the original translations of a lot of these texts have words that are very direct, words that are very, very blunt because these are very serious matters. And so it's not, there's not room for us to create gray areas and there's not room for us to be nice about these areas. The devil is after your soul. This flesh does not want you to serve God. The Bible says this flesh is hostile towards God. And so you got to know that your flesh is going to fight against you every step of the way. So I love what it says. It says in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse uh, 5, not in the in your lust or the passions of your lust, even as the heathen which know not God. And so what it's saying is that it, when you follow after lust and you run after lust or you allow lust to reign, you're acting like somebody who doesn't know God. You don't know God. That's, so that's what it's saying. I'm not saying you don't know God. What I'm trying to say is when you give in to lust and you give in to the perversion, you're acting like the heathen. Uh, John Piper, again, he said something so beautiful in his article. He said, uh, knowing God and acting like it keeps sexual desire from becoming lust. And that is so powerful that if we know God and we act like it, if we live like it, it's going to keep sexual desire from becoming lust. Now, this is something we have to understand. Sexual desire is very, very, very normal for the human. There are desires that are in us that are by nature. God gave us sexual desires. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want God to take my sexual desire away. I plan on getting married one day. I'm going to need my sexual desire. I don't want to ask God to take it away and then I get married and I can't function right. You know what I'm saying? So it's a natural desire. Uh, sexual desires are natural. What is unnatural or what is of the sin nature is the perversion of that sexual desire. I heard someone say one time, a uh, great quote, it said, sex is like fire. It's good in the fireplace, it's bad on the curtains. So it's good when it's in the context of covenant. It's, it's good for what it was designed for. So sex was designed for the pleasure of, uh, you know, those who are in the covenant of marriage, a man and a woman in holy matrimony. In that marriage covenant, uh, that's where you're designed to uh, be able to explore or for have that sexual desire fulfilled by your husband or your wife uh, for procreation for the enjoyment of the married couple. Um, so I think for us, a lot of our issue is that we have all of this flesh and we just don't know what to do with it. We got all of this desire and all of these hormones and we don't know what to do with it. And so it's so interesting that we live in this modern society, this modern generation where we literally our eye gates, our ear gates, our, the doors and the gates of our soul are constantly being stimulated. Uh, 24-7, 365, the doors and the gates of our souls are constantly being stimulated by something, some kind of imagery, some kind of sound, you know, all of this stuff. And so we're constantly taking in messages through our eye gates, our ear gates, the doors and the gates of our soul, constantly taking in all of this stuff. And there is this rapid uh, influx of perversion and of lust and of seduction and there's all of this seduction you know marketing nowadays is full of seduction because they know that sex sells and so it's almost like everything has a sexual connotation or everything has a sexual overtone and because we're taking all of this stuff in and we it's become normal because we've allowed society to normalize these things then when our bodies and our flesh is raging and we are not surrendering to sanctification surrendering to honor, it can almost drive you crazy because it's like, oh God. And you might think, well, maybe I have a demon. Maybe I got some kind of spirit. And the reality is it's not a demon. It's not a spirit. The book of Galatians lists things that it, it calls the works of the flesh. And the works of the flesh, you cannot rebuke a work of the flesh. You cannot cast a work of the flesh out. Works of the flesh must be laid down. They must be surrendered. You got to repent and give it up. So when it comes to the works of the flesh, uh, you know, a lot of times people come to the altar. They ask for prayer. They ask for hands to be laid on. They want to be delivered. And there are times where there are 
spirits at work. Believe you me, there are spirits at work in the earth, but the Bible calls it a spirit of perversion. And a spirit of perversion, when it comes along to try you or to tempt you or to drop seed thoughts, it can't make you do anything. Born again believer, if you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Ghost of God. The spirit of perversion cannot control you. Come on, somebody. You are free from these spirits. You're free from the control of the devil. You're free even from the control of the flesh. You choose willingly whether or not you come into agreement with that spirit, whether or not you come into agreement with your flesh and the lust thereof. The Bible says, that every man, when he is led astray of his own, his own lustful, evil desires, then when that thing is full grown, it brings forth sin. And when sin has had its way, it brings forth death. Death, not necessarily a natural death, although that could be, but more so a spiritual death or a severing to the tie of life, which is Jesus Christ, the source of life, the Holy Spirit. So, all of this to say that, you know, the devil can't make you do anything. You know what I mean? Like nobody went and slept with anybody and then the devil made me do it. No, he did not. The devil did not make you do that. Nobody watched a uh, porn masturbated any of that the devil that that the devil made you do it. the devil does not make us do these things but it's when the spirit of perversion comes along if it can find in you at all any space of agreement any space uh where it will come into agreement when that temptation comes you have the power and the authority to make a choice whether you're going to obey it or not or whether you're going to bring it captive the bible says bring every thought captive to the obedience of jesus christ Christ. So when lustful thoughts come or temptations come or the flesh is getting worked up or the hormones are raging, you have to make a conscious decision and you have to ask the Holy Spirit for the fruit of self-control. And you have to say, Holy Ghost, please brew over my decision. I'm going to say yes to God. And I believe that you're going to empower my yes. And the Holy Spirit will empower your yes so that you can conquer and overcome this flesh. Every time I've struggled with masturbation, I've struggled with pornography, but it wasn't until I made up my mind to surrender to the Lord, to let go. There have been days, if I can be just very honest with you all, you know, y'all are human. So you know what it's like. Uh, there have been days where I've literally had to lift my hands and say, Father, I give you my hands. My hands were created to worship you, and I will not lend my my body, my members to unrighteousness. I'm not going to give my my body, which was created to glorify Jesus, to unrighteousness, to work uh, that which is un unseemly within my own body. No, I won't do that. So you have to make conscious choices and allow the Holy Spirit to empower those decisions. And I promise you, it's not easy at first. It, it's, it's very, very difficult. And there are times where your flesh will rage, but you have to choose to obey the Lord. There are days where literally you will roll back and forth in your bed like oh, trying not to give into this flesh, but you got to do something. The Bible says an idle mind is the devil's workshop. If you just lay in there allowing your thoughts to linger, you know, if you're just doing whatever, allowing those thoughts to linger, then yes, you're going to go through the torment. But if you get up, get out your bed, go do something, praise, get up, start clapping, put your mind on the Lord, start speaking out declarations of faith, go do something, go, you know, meet the brethren, hang out with brothers and sisters in Christ, go find something to do to get your mind off of it. Because an idle mind is the devil's workshop. You've got to put your mind on him. So a couple more scriptures as I was studying, it's really, really good stuff. Um, so we're still in first Thessalonians four, right? First Thessalonians four. And we went down through verse five, verse six says, uh, let no man go beyond to defraud his brother in this concerning this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified, for God has not called us to uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despises this, despises not man, but God, who has also given unto us the Holy Spirit. This is saying, don't let anybody defraud you concerning this matter. We warned you that God takes this matter very seriously, very, very seriously. You know, it's interesting that, that uh, 
All sin, the scripture says, is sin that we commit outside of our body. But the Bible says sin that is of, of sexual nature is sin that we could we commit against ourselves. It's sin that we commit within our body. And the scripture says that this is a very, 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 very serious thing to the Lord. You know, I know in our culture, it's not as serious. You know, it's just masturbation. It's just pornography. It's just lust. No, these are serious matters to the Lord. And we have to be able to, as a people, as the body of Christ, take some form, some level of responsibility as an individual to say, I am I have the power of the Holy Ghost, and I'm not going to allow myself to be given to uncleanness. This isn't the will of God concerning my life. Do y'all follow me? There has to be some level of responsibility. Responsibility means response able. I'm able to give a response. And so when we take responsibility over these things and we come in partnership or agreement with the Holy Spirit, we can get to great things and we can overcome this stuff. But the Bible says, if you despise this, there's people that don't even want to hear this right now. Like you, you ready to cut this off and go do something else because it, it your flesh despises it. But the Bible says, if you despise uh, this conversation, you don't despise uh, uh, man, you despise God who gave you the Holy Spirit. Your flesh is bitter against God concerning this matter. Your flesh wants to blame everything and everybody else. Your flesh would love to blame the devil and you would love to not even have this conversation. Not that important. There's more important things we should talk about. No, I've, they forewarned us. The scripture says God did not call you to uncleanness. Imagine using your faith, you using all your faith that God gave you to conquer cities and, and turn cities upside down and move mountains and you wasting your faith trying to stay out of sin. Y'all get what I'm trying to say? He gave us the Holy Ghost to bear the fruits of God unto salvation and them fruits remain. I'm not trying to say that, you know, you're, you're going to be perfect. You're not. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to slip. You're going to mess up. But this does not have to be your portion. Your portion is holiness. Your portion is being satisfied in the Lord. And I'm telling you today that lust comes to steal your satisfaction in the Holy Spirit. When you give in to lust, now I'll give you John Piper's uh, quote again. He said, I just dropped these papers. He said this, John, Pe John Piper's quote, uh, knowing God, no, 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 that's not it. A sexual desire, his definition for lust, a sexual desire uh, that dishonors its object and disregards God. Lust dishonors its object and disregards God. When you lust, you are thoroughly disregarding God. As a born again believer, to give into lust is to just thoroughly disregard God because lust comes to steal the place of intimacy with the Father. Lust comes to keep you out of intimacy with the Father. I promise you, every time lust comes, it's coming to keep you from going in or entering in to intimacy with the Lord. And I promise if you flip the script on your flesh, when your flesh go to desire and go to craving, and you say, no, I will not give in, and you bring this body under subjection, and you put yourself into the presence of Abba Father, Jesus Christ, and allow yourself to enter into intimacy with the Lord, not perversion, not sex, that's not what we do, but but it's, it's being satisfied by God. Do y'all get what I'm saying? To tell this flesh, I know what you want, but I know what I need. I'm not in the covenant of marriage yet. I can't lend myself to those kind of things. But one day, I'll be able to fulfill those desires in the right way. So I love what Mike Bickle said. He said, you know, you don't repent over the desire necessarily as much as you repent over fulfilling the desire in a wrong or an ungodly way. Amen. All right. So another scripture we're going to read and we're going to be done is Ephesians 4 and verse 17. Ephesians 4 and verse 17. Again, I'm just studying and wanted to come on here to record my thoughts and share it with you. Maybe it'll bless you. So for those few that might see this, I love you. <laughs> Ephesians chapter number four, verse 17. Ephesians 4 and 17. It says this, Ephesians 4 and 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles or heathens. Amen. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their own mind, having the, their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through their ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Hear the word of God. It goes on to say this who being past feeling have given themselves 
over unto lasciviousness to work all matter of uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to its deceitful lust. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Hallelujah. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. This is a beautiful thing. You were given, when you were born again, a new nature, lust, perversion, evil. The Bible says all of that comes out of the unregenerated heart. That word heart is translated as soul. It means the mind, the will, and the emotions. Your unredeemed soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, if you don't give your mind to think, it's going to take thoughts from anywhere and everywhere. You've got to feed your mind the word of God. How shall a young man cleanse his way? Psalm 119. By taking heed according to thy word. you got to feed your spirit the word of God. You can't be feeding this flesh. You know, it's interesting that, you know, this society, this generation of young people, I'm 27, I'm a young guy. A lot of you, you know, out there who might see this might be young as well. Uh, and, and the reality is that lust is nothing new. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. This struggle with lust and perversion, this is a, a struggle that is common to all believers. Every human struggles with this to some degree or another. Um, but the reality is there's never been a generation like like today. There's never been a generation where it was the only thing that it can be likened unto. The Bible says that in the last days it'll be likened unto the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It'll be where perversion is everywhere, where evil is everywhere. But the doors and the gates of our soul are being stimulated, you know, unlike any other time in the world. And so the depth of evil that is in this world has gotten so deep and every day it gets deeper. And so the reality is if we're going to make it in this lost and defiled world, the Bible says having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins gird about with truth, gird up the loins of your mind with the truth. If we're going to make it in this last and evil day, in this depth of evil, we're going to have to go to even a greater depth in consecration. I want to be so deep in God until it supersedes the depth of sin that I came out of. I want to walk in a depth of God, which means this. You've got to get your orders of consecration. You've got to get with the Holy Ghost of God and find out what are your orders of consecration. Now, I know there are a lot of things where people say, you know, well, that's your convictions. That's not my convictions. A lot of the stuff we say that about has nothing to do with convictions. It's people that want to live carnal lives and want to live loose lives, want to live low level living. Uh, when you're saved, you don't, you don't spend waste time trying to find out how much sin you can do and get away with. You don't waste time, you know, trying to find out how carnal can I be and still love Jesus. No, that's foolishness. For absolutely foolishness. But when you're saved, you've been born again, you've been given the spirit of truth, your mind has been renewed by the Holy Ghost of God, there's got to be something in you that craves him. There's got to be something in you that says, I want to walk with Jesus like, like Enoch did until he was and he was not. Can y'all get that? Enoch walked so closely with the Lord until... God sent a chariot down just to pick him up and carry him away. He never tasted of death. That's how intense his walk was with the Lord. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Can you imagine that? So it says this, put off concerning the former conversation, put off the old man and all of his lusts and all of his desires and all of his evils, put it off. Now that old man's going to try you. As we walk in the depth uh, you know, of holiness, the reality is that we are in this world, but we're not of this world. And this is a beautiful thing. Jesus prayed to the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, my prayer is not that you would take them out of the world. Hallelujah. I don't want you to take them out. I, I want you to leave them in the world, but keep them from the evil one. So the reality is there has to be a witness of the power of God in the earth. And that witness, that fruit that remains is not churchianity. That fruit that remains is not, oh, I go to church. That fruit that remains is not, I speak in tongues or I run, I dance, I shout. It's not even, I love God. It's no, 
I love God. And because I love him, I follow after him and I bear the fruits of salvation, the fruits of holiness, the fruit of a transformed life. I'm a studier of the word of God. I don't leave the word of God off. I'm, I'm falling in love with this, that there's no such thing as too saved or too deep. Ain't nothing, ain't, it ain't deep. This Honestly, most of the stuff that we talk about, it, holiness and righteousness, sanctification, that's the shallow end. And I, you know, I have a saying, if you call that deep, I'm assume you just don't know how to swim. I mean, that's the reality. You know, I know people who are afraid of water and they think that the shallow end is deep because they're terrified of water. So if you, you know, if it's like the scripture said a minute ago, if you despise this, you don't despise man. You despise God. You're not mad at me. You mad at the word of God. You're mad at God. Amen. So I'm gonna keep reading this real quick and then we're gonna be done. It says this, uh, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The spirit of your mind has to be renewed. How can I renew my mind? By the washing of the water of the word. The, the mind st doesn't stay any more renewed than the hair stays combed or the body stays clean. You got to do it every day, sometimes multiple times during the day. If you expect to keep this vessel pure. Amen, somebody. God's not going to come down, just inject you with sanctification shots. That's not how this works. You got to agree with God. You got to get in partnership with God. That's how this relationship is two parties here. This is how it works. Amen. Okay, so to wrap this up, what is the answer for lust? What is, how do I overcome it? How do I conquer lust? How do I cast it down? How do I renew my mind? All of that stuff. I want to read you two scriptures. And I'm going to be out of here tonight. I'm going to go to bed. Two scriptures. Proverbs chapter number four. This is the key to overcoming. This is the key to overcoming sexual perversion, uh, lust, the lust of the flesh, all of that. Proverbs chapter number four. Uh, there's six of y'all on at the moment. So if you're on, type in Proverbs four in the comments so I know you're with me. Proverbs four, verse 23. Proverbs four, thank you for the hearts. Proverbs four and verse 23. Thank you, I see you. All right, Brother Ricky, Proverbs chapter 4, yes, verse 23. All right, so we're here, Proverbs 4, 23. It says this, it says, I'm going 23 to 27. It says this, Proverbs 4, 23 to 27. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Put away from you. A forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Let your eyes look right on. Hallelujah. And let your eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of your feet and let all of your ways be established. Hallelujah. Turn not to the right hand, neither to the left. Remove your foot from evil. <laughs> Listen to what the writer said. The writer said, Keep your heart. We just talked. We just told you what is a heart. heart your heart is translated as the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. Keep your soul with all diligence. You got to be diligent about keeping that soul with its mind stayed on Jesus. You got to constantly be bringing your thoughts captive to the obedience of, of Christ. And this is the beautiful thing about this battle: is you don't do it in your own strength. You don't do it in your own power. There's no striving. It's perfect surrender, perfect submission to the Holy Spirit, and. He he gives you the grace. He gives you the strength to do these things. Y'all feel me? So it goes on to say, put away from you a forward mouth, a perverse lips, put far from you perverse lips and perverse joking and jesting. And, and even the things we watch, the things we take in with our eyes, put perversion far from you. Be very careful to guard. Now, the reality is that we live in this defiled world, so you're going to see things. You're going to hear things that you wish you hadn't, but that does not mean that you have to allow it access. Just because it came here doesn't mean it's got to get here and doesn't mean it's got to get in my heart. Hallelujah. So the minute it gets here, I cast it down. I cancel its power, its authority. The minute a perverse word or a negative word gets here, it doesn't have to gain access to my soul. I have to pray every day. Lord, let the Holy Ghost of God stand guard over the doors and the gates of my soul. Help me to be a discerner of those things that are right and those things that are wrong. Help me to be a diligent servant. Help me to be a good steward of the doors and the gates of my soul. Amen. So that's the scripture. It talks about, it talks about what you need to do. It says, look straight ahead. Don't look to the right or to the left. You know, when perversion is all around, you don't stare at it. Huh? Don't be company to it. 
the, the, you know, a saying they used to say all the time when I was in Bible college, to permit is to participate. To permit is to participate. I'm not per, uh, participating in your evil. You got to know when to draw the line, when to cut it out, when to say, when to speak up, and when to not. And really, it all comes down to you, your heart, what's in your heart, what's your motives, what's your actions, your responses. And so put it away from you. And it says this, the very last uh, part of the scripture, verse 27, remove your foot from evil. Get away from the evil. The Bible talks about lust. We're never, uh, the Bible says, says it this way, flee from temptation. Resist the devil and he will flee. You got to be able to discern when do you need to flee, huh? And when do you need to resist and make him flee, huh? You got to know when to do that. If nine times out of 10, you need to run, huh? And resist that devil. All right, last scripture. I'm done going to bed. Psalm 27. This is the last scripture. This is how we overcome this stuff. Setting our minds on Jesus. Psalm 27. Psalm 27 is one of my favorite scriptures. It says this, Psalm 27 and verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hallelujah. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that's what I'm going to seek after, that I may dwell. I want to abide in the house of the Lord, in the presence of God all of the days of my life. I promise you that there's liberty in the presence of God. There's freedom in the presence of Jesus. There's joy, peace uh, that floods your soul in the presence of God. David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. I want to dwell in the presence of God, in the house of God, all the days of my life to behold his beauty and to inquire in his temple. I want to look at Jesus. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, he's going to keep you, the Bible says, in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. Think on those things that are of good report, those things that are above, those things that are lovely, praiseworthy. All of these things gird up the loins of your mind and say like David, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that's what I'm going to seek after. So that's all I want to say tonight in terms of the topic of lust. You don't have a devil. You don't have a demon. You know, nine times out of ten, most of y'all, you know, you don't necessarily need hands laid on you. If you need a brother or a sister to touch and agree with you in prayer, Go, expose the devil and, and pray together. But the reality is we got too much dependency on outside sources. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much dependency on outside sources. You got the Holy Ghost. Are you saved? If I mean, the reality is you got to know this. Are you saved? Have you been born again? Have you repented of your sin? Have you crossed from death unto life? Have you received the Holy Ghost and power? If you haven't, you need to be saved. You need to repent. That's what you need to do. Repent and give it to the Lord and allow Jesus to save you because he'll save you every time. But if you're saved, if you're born again, you got the Holy Ghost. He's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. And those outside sources, you know, people praying with you, laying hands on you, you know, extra, you know, biblical texts. You, you know, you got a book on overcoming sexual perversion or, you know, whatever, this, this and that. Those things are wonderful, but we cannot rely on them. They cannot be the thing we go to. Otherwise, we just just have another idol. We have something else that we put before the Lord. Nine, nine times out of 10, all you need is the Holy Ghost. You need the Bible. You need to read it. You need to eat the scroll and allow the Holy Spirit to brew over that word and let the word, the word do the work in you. But it's like the scripture says, most of the time we despise this word. We despise this Bible and we despise the reality. Most of us know more truth, you know, than we live. We preach more truth than we live. We talk more truth than we live. We acknowledge truth, but we don't agree with it. And there's a whole different thing there. You, you know, it's easy to acknowledge truth. Like, mm, I know that's right. Preach. But do you agree with it? <laughs> Has your life come into agreement with it? Are you living it out? Have you, you know, received the anointing of the Holy Ghost to destroy your agreements with lies? And have you received the anointing of the Holy Ghost to come into agreement to say amen for real? To, you know, it is so I agree with God, with the Holy Spirit. Something to put your mind to, something to think about. So I'm praying for you guys. I love you all. You have power in you, resident by the Holy Spirit to overcome every trial you're facing 
Lend not your members to unrighteousness, but give your body to the Lord. Uh, and I promise you every time the Lord is going to cause you uh, to what the book of Thessalonians said, let every person possess their vessel in holiness and in honor. That's what it's all about. You got to receive your orders of consecration, possess this vessel in holiness and in honor to the Lord. And I know that's not always the easiest task, especially in your own strength, but I promise you by way of the Holy Ghost, if you put your trust in him, you can make it, you can overcome, and you can live a victorious life free from the lust of this flesh. Will you be tempted? Will you be tried? Yes, every day of your life, you're gonna be tempted till Jesus comes. That's the reality. It might not be as bad every day. There's great days and there's days where your flesh is raging, but I promise you there's coming a day, the hope of our salvation where Jesus is returning for us and where we will be able to enter into the new Jerusalem and we'll be able to cast off this body of death and we'll put on our glorified body. And in that day, we could say once and for all, I'm saved. I'm saved and I'm always going to be saved. And that's the day that we look forward to. So take up your cross, follow after him, deny yourself, promise you God's going to bless you. Love you guys. Be blessed.